There are only two emotions that humankind experiences, fear and love. All other emotions branch either directly or indirectly from these two emotions. Fear has a long and slow frequency vibration to it, while love has a very rapid and high frequency. To show that vibration is the very foundation of existence, Hans Jene developed what is known as cymatics in the 1940s to show that when vibrations of sound are passed through a form of media, there is a set pattern that will follow. When the frequency increases, the media develops into a more complex pattern. This is precisely what is happening to our Earth and to humanity. There are 64 possible codes of amino acids in our DNA structure made from four elements, carbon, oxygen, hydrogen, and nitrogen. By any means of logic, we should have all 64 codes activated within our DNA structure. Yet we presently only have 20 active codes. We have 64 possibilities. 64 possibilities. And of these 64 possibilities, it appears that only 20 of these codes are turned on right now for us. The 20 amino acid touches where it crosses this double helix is what determines where the site is that that code will either be turned off or turned on. If we're going to have an antenna at this site, it will only be turned on if the wave of emotion crosses this, um, this double helix. Well, this is really interesting for us because two things. First of all, uh, the waves of emotion. Researchers have determined that you and I are primarily capable of only two emotions. Many derivatives of those emotions and two primary emotions, fear and love. Fear and love. Well, fear is a long, slow wave of emotion. So this wave of fear is a long, slow wave and touches relatively few sites on this DNA. So an individual living in fear is limited to the number of antenna that they have available to them. Whereas an individual uh, living in the pattern of love, this is love in DNA. You can see it's, it's a higher frequency, shorter uh, wavelength. We have many more potential sites for coding uh, along that genetic pattern. This information, this is amazing. This is the first time we've ever had a hard digital link between emotion and genetics. And what we're saying is this, that the way you interpret and perceive emotion in your lives directly, linear, linearly affects and determines how your body responds genetically. We are dealing with a galactic energy field. It's a full halo expanding energy field that goes through the entire galaxy and when it reaches us, it causes changes in our solar system, it causes activation of our DNA molecule, and that, my friends, is what's causing these 65 million year cycles and 26 million year cycles of species evolution in the fossil record. Ron Sakely, Department Chairman, Chemistry, University of California, Berkeley, showed that DNA acts as an antenna for cellular upregulation. The primary function they taught us about what DNA is about, it's a receiver and transmitter of photons, light and phonon sound. For what? Cellular upregulation, meaning that their water molecules, the pyramid power around the DNA spiral energizing strands are taking in the spiritual energy of love vibrations and then sending it out for manifesting, precipitating in a quantum field the physical matter of the body. This is important to understand because another researcher named Vladimir Popinov measured tiny particles of light called photons inside a vacuum tube. The photons were scattered as expected. A sample of DNA was then entered into the vacuum tube and they measured the photons again. They found that the particles of light aligned themselves along the axis of the DNA. Then, as they removed the DNA sample, the photons remained aligned to the same form of the DNA even though no DNA was present. This is what is known as the phantom DNA experiment. Science has now bridged a very important gap between physical and ethereal, or spiritual. Our emotions directly affect the structure of our DNA, which directly shapes the physical world we experience every day.
So the messages left by the ancients that we've explained here were more than just prophecies about a one world government or a new world order. We now understand why the study of the heavenly bodies were so important. The rotation and orbit of all that makes up our universe serves as a clock to map changes and transitions. This helped the ancients understand that the change of the heavenly bodies were a mirror to the changes of all existence. December 21st, 2012 is simply a natural transition from one form of energy to the next, the transcendental evolution of man. This date is what's known as zero point. Our sun, as well as our planet Earth, is losing its magnetic field as the Earth is slowing in its rotation. All the while, its base resonant frequency, also known as the Schumann cavity resonance, is increasing in accordance with the predictable sequence of the Fibonacci theory. At a cellular level, our bodies respond to an electromagnetic pulse. The ancients called this the sacred circuit. The cells receive this pulse from the brain, which receives its pulse from the heart, which receives its pulse from the earth. This pulse comes from the solar system, which from there comes from the galaxy, which ultimately comes from our entire universe. We literally share a pulse with all of existence. Yet another example of everything being one. As the body is adjusting with this, the cell, the new frequency, the cells are receiving new instructions. This is what is creating these temporary physical things that we're experiencing. The new instructions that our body is being given. When you feel fear, you are shooting energy out of your field. When you feel love and trust, you are building energy from the cosmos to yourself. This has a direct effect on biological healing. We, I have an interview that I'm going to air pretty soon with Dr. Glenn Ryan, in which he proved on a microbiological level with molecular genetics that the DNA molecule changes its form based on the energy that you send to it with your consciousness. And when you send the emotion of gratitude, that was the one word that he found was the most important one. Mm. Gratitude, mm -hmm. more than anything else, heals damaged DNA. You can kill DNA by what's called a heat fix, and it unwinds. And by loving, by the sense of loving gratitude, the DNA rewinds and comes back together.